Hello everybody, it's Avril from Mitchy Titch here. Lovely to see you all. Well, what a surprise we have. We are going to read Daniel's Dreams, Monster Mountain by Leanne Brown and illustrated by Yogesh Mahajan. Now, a wonderful, wonderful book. Shall I tell you a little about it? You see, Daniel in the book is feeling a little worried about something that he has to do in school that he finds quite difficult. But Daniel needs some tools to help him get over it. Do you think he'll keep his cool when it comes to the big day? Well, we're going to find out. But first of all, I'd like you to tell you a little about Leanne that wrote this book. Leanne dedicates the book to her daughter, Erin Olivia. She says she fills her life with love, laughter and hope. Now, she doesn't live too far away from me. I'm in Liverpool. Leanne is in Greater Manchester, so I'm keeping my fingers crossed that one day we may be able to meet up for a coffee. Wouldn't that be wonderful? So Leanne is a secondary school English teacher. She specialises in special educational needs and now she is focusing on writing children's books on mental health issues and hopes her books will help children everywhere, which I'm sure they will. So when Leanne is not writing, she spends time with her family. She loves to read and don't we all? She loves to colour and watch a good film or enjoying a nice meal out. She loves to go swimming too. So, without further ado, I think we should get going, don't you? Here we go. Daniel's Dreams, Monster Mountain, written by Leanne Brown and illustrated. The pictures inside by Yogesh Mahajan. And here we go. Oh, I feel quite excited. Chapter one, Daniel and Darcy. So this is Daniel and Darcy with their family. Okay. Daniel sat with his family to have their tea. This was something they did every night. They would talk about their days and what they had done. Mum and Dad insisted on it. Time at the table to talk and be together is important, they would say. Daniel liked it. He loved being with his family. But this evening was different. Daniel shifted restlessly in his chair as he struggled to sit still. There was something on his mind, something that was unsettling him and he couldn't focus properly on his meal. He pushed his food around his plate and mum interrupted his thoughts. So what have we done today? Mum asked while she passed the broccoli. Dad talked about how he had meetings, taken phone calls and all the usual boring stuff parents seem to do when they go to work. Except me, I do yoga. It's fabulous. Well, Amelia and I had a falling out today and Miss Rogers had to speak to us, announced Darcy, Daniel's younger sister. Oh dear, now what was that all about? Dad asked with a roll of his eyes. Daniel listened as Darcy went on and on about how her and Amelia had wanted to use the special paintbrush and only one of them could get to use it. Amelia won and this upset Darcy, really upset her. As Darcy continued with her story, Daniel began to feel strange. He was there at the table and he could hear Darcy talking, but he didn't feel like he was processing what she had said. He heard bits of the story, but then his mind would wonder. Daniel, 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 are you okay? Mum's words reached him through the fog in his mind. Oh yeah, sorry Mum, uh, what were you asking? Daniel asked embarrassed. I said, how was your day at school? It was fine, Daniel replied in a low tone. Is everything okay, Daniel? It's just, you're incredibly quiet. And you've hardly eaten anything, Mum asked with a loving touch of his arms. I just don't feel very hungry and I've got those bug things in my belly again. Daniel was sad and lowered his head. You mean butterflies? 
Dad asked with a smile. Yeah, butterflies, Daniel whispered. Daniel, everything is going to be okay. It's okay to be nervous. It's natural, Mum reassured him. It sure is. You'll be amazing, Darcy added with excitement and a mouthful of food. Remember, butterflies in your belly aren't always a bad thing. They can be signs of excitement too, Dad told him. Their words helped to settle Daniel's thoughts for a little while, but they didn't take away the fact that something unpleasant was looming. After tea, Daniel helped clear the plates and went to get ready for his bath. Typically, the bathroom was covered with water. It was everywhere, in places you wouldn't even know water could reach. This was a clear sign that Darcy had been in the bath first and had very much enjoyed it too. It looked like a waterfall had burst everywhere. Daniel's parents often compared Darcy's bath time to bathing a dolphin. Once bathed, Daniel heard his mum shout that their hot chocolates were ready. He still felt butterflies in his stomach. He wanted to believe everything would be okay. He wished he could believe in himself. Darcy flew out of their bedroom, grabbed Daniel's arm and dragged him down the stairs. He would have to solve his worries later. As night closed in slowly, the stars twinkled brightly in the dark sky. The icy cold air wrapped itself around Daniel and his sister as they finished off their warming hot chocolates. Straight up to bed after those hot chocolates, Mum said firmly, you have an important day tomorrow. Oh, but Mum, Darcy complained. No complaining, Darcy, Mum exclaimed. I'll be right up, said Daniel eagerly. Darcy always tried to argue for more time, but she had to go to sleep. She was a fiery little girl with a soft spot for her brother. Daniel often thought she got away with most things because she had a cute smile. But he knew she was strong and independent too. Bedtime was Daniel's favourite time of the day. He knew he would meet new people, go on great adventures and experience different feelings. Every night he visited somewhere new, someone new. He always did. Daniel ran up the stairs in record speed. He brushed his teeth, shouted goodnight and jumped into bed, his worries forgotten. Daniel took some deep, calming breaths as he did every night to help him fall asleep. Always a good idea. He drifted off to sleep knowing that his journey for the night was just about to begin. He didn't know where he would end up or who he would meet, but he did know it would be fun. So here he is in his bed. And I think here are some of the people he might be meeting in this story. Chapter two, Daniel and Darcy. Daniel slowly opened his eyes. A piercing light shone into them and startled him. He pulled the duvet up to his chin. As he peered over the top soft duvet cover, he spotted someone, something. He was unsure at what was staring back at him and that made him feel uneasy. This thing was like nothing he had seen before. He was excited, but nervous. The butterflies in his belly were back again. He remembered mum saying that butterflies could be a good feeling too. The piercing light dimmed a little and he felt himself relax. This was the sign he was waiting for. His journey had begun. He was in his dreams and his venture was about to unfold. Hey, hey, come on, wake up, the thing shouted. Daniel tried to focus his eyes so he could make out exactly the thing was that was standing at the side of the bed. Who are you? Daniel asked curiously. Come on, we've got adventures to go on. I've got to get back quickly tonight. Come on, come on. The thing shook him with excitement. Daniel sat up, rubbed his eyes and looked around. This was his bedroom, but the thing looking back at him was not something he normally saw in his bedroom. He needed a moment to compose himself and remember he was in his dreams. And there is Daniel with the thing <laughs> next to his bed. It does look rather odd. 
In front of him stood a tall, squidgy looking, not a thing, a monster. The monster was corn yellow with an egg shaped body that had two spindly long eyes sticking out of the top of his head. A long ruby red tongue slipped in and out of his mouth. Strangely, he wore a pair of denim blue jeans that looked like they belonged on a human, not a monster. But no t-shirt. You're, you're a monster, Daniel screamed, trembling as he sat up. I sure am, the monster said in an overly excited tone. Pleased to meet you. I'm Dex. He offered out his hand, which was long and thin, with jelly dripping from it. Dex did not seem concerned that Daniel was scared of him. Yeah, yeah, nice to meet you, said Daniel sheepishly. No need to be afraid. Not all monsters are scary, you know, Dex said in a serious tone with his hands on his hips. In fact, my friends and I can be quite good fun, and some of us are super cool, just like me. Dex was swinging his body around, as if to show off exactly how cool he was. <laughs> you should never judge someone just because of how they look. That's what all we all say to one another anyway. Dex spoke with confidence. Daniel looked down and mumbled. I'm sorry if I upset you. I just wasn't expecting to see, you know, monsters. Who is we? Daniel looked around. Are there more monsters here? Oh, you know, me and my other monster friends back in the village. There's a whole lot of us, all different and unique. If you think I look odd, wait until you meet the others, Dex said proudly. So there's more of you? Daniel wondered what the other monsters would look like. I'd love to meet them all. Would you like to see Dex? He does look quite hip in those jeans. He said he thought he was quite cool. <laughs> My name's Daniel, by the way. Nice to meet you, Daniel. Do you want to come and meet my friends? I'm sure they would love to meet you too, but we have to get going. I have to be back in time tonight. Dex gave a funny giggle. <laughs> What's so funny, Daniel asked, confused, looking himself up and down. You look funny, a little different to us, Dex said with a smile. I thought we didn't judge what people looked like, Daniel reminded him. You're right, sorry. We've got to go, can't be late, Dex said eagerly. Absolutely, said Daniel with great excitement. He jumped to his feet and brushed himself off. Let's go, he shouted as he stood with Dex. So far, this looked like it was to be a special adventure. Daniel loved how his dreams took him to new places and he got to meet different people, beings and things. Every night was something new. And this was the start of tonight's journey. Firstly, we have to get there. Now let me try and remember the rhyme to get us there. Dex scratched his chin. A rhyme? Questioned Daniel. Yeah, we have to say a rhyme to get us on our way. Everyone is waiting, so let's get going. Shelley is coming tonight and it's really important we are all there, Dex said with great excitement. Shelley? Questioned Daniel. And coming where? Yeah, I'll explain when we get there, Dex said hurriedly. Take a breath and close your eyes to visit places filled with butterflies, magical places old and new. Meet unique monsters and take in the view. At Monster Mountain, we will stop, run, jump, play and maybe hop. A land of unique independence and hope where we can be ourselves and learn to cope. Dex said this slowly and with care, trying not to mess up his words. He took Daniel's hand and they closed their eyes. A tingle fizzled up Daniel's body from his head to his toes. Dex still had hold of his hand. It was slimy and squinchy. Open your eyes, we're here. Dex whispered to Daniel. Daniel's eyes remained closed. He was a little nervous, unsure of what he would see. His hands felt sweaty. 
It's okay, Daniel. You're safe. There is nothing to worry about. Daniel felt Dex squeeze his hand for reassurance. As he squeezed his hand, the slime squidged between their hands and made a funny noise that Daniel and Dex laughed. Sounds like Harlow's bum when he eats too many beans, Dex laughed. Although he loved the adventures he went on his, in his dreams, Daniel was a shy and timid child. There were times, especially at school, when he would feel worried and often needed to be encouraged by others. Take a deep breath and open your eyes. I'm right next to you, Dex said calmly. Daniel took a deep breath. and calmed his nerves. He didn't know what to expect or where he would be when he opened his eyes. In fact, he didn't even know who would be staring back at him either. Daniel slowly opened his eyes. What he saw before him was something truly magical, something he had never seen before. He was finally at the destination of tonight's dreams. Chapter three, Monster Mountain. This place, it's, it's, it's just magical, Daniel exclaimed, spinning around and taking in the sights his eyes were drinking in. It was beautiful, Daniel was awestruck. It was like nothing he had seen before. He had been on many adventures in his dreams, but this place was different. It was unique, it was truly special. Daniel had opened his eyes to discover he was on top of a steep hill. The grass was emerald green and luscious. To each side of him, Daniel could see the hills rolling for what seemed like miles and miles. What is this place? Where is this place? Daniel asked in amazement. This is Monster Mountain. This is home. There was pride in Dex's voice. I think it's beautiful. I don't think there's anything monstrous about it, Daniel smiled. That's because everyone thinks monsters are mean, but we aren't. We are different, that's all, Dex admitted shyly. Daniel spotted something twinkling out of the corner of his eye. It glistened like snow in the winter time, and he was desperate to know what it was. Before he could ask, Dex was encouraging him to come and meet his other monster friends. Let's go! Dex said. Dex pointed down the hill, which immediately caught Daniel's attention. At the bottom of the hill, he could see a village. Daniel was going to meet Dex's friends and see where they all lived. Daniel had butterflies in his stomach again. He knew he needed to deal with them, but he was too excited and tried to push them to one side. Daniel and Dex walked down the hill in the direction of the houses. As they grew closer to the village, they came across a sign that said, Welcome to Monster Mountain, the village of uniqueness and difference. The sign was dripping with slime, but Daniel didn't think that unusual after seeing Dex's hands. Why is it called Monster Mountain? asked Daniel inquisitively. Because sometimes when we all face in life is a mountain to be climbed but with the right encouragement, we can get over it. The view from the top of a mountain is like looking forward into the future and is definitely worth the climb, Dex explained. Daniel twirled his body round to take in the beauty he saw before him. As he stopped, he spotted the twinkle that caught his eye earlier. In front of him was a large clock tower. It was a very special clock tower. Daniel saw the face of the clock glistening in diamonds. Beautiful, pure, sparkling diamonds. It was a magnificent, in the sunlight, it shone as far as Daniel could see. He smiled as he noticed the numbers on the clock were all upside down and backwards. He giggled and wondered how they could ever be on time for anything when the clock was always wrong. Monster Mountain was so beautiful calm even. Daniel realised that he felt relaxed, that he hadn't even thought about the dreaded task tomorrow. His worries had faded somehow. Now, would you like to see what Monster Mountain looks like?
Wow, look. And all the beautiful colours. You could just imagine being there, couldn't you? As the two of them reached the houses, Daniel could see that this was not like any other town he had seen or been to before. This was uniquely different, truly odd, but oh so wonderful. The houses were different colours, blue, green, red, yellow, orange and everything else in between. There were round houses, square houses, triangular houses, every shape and size. They appeared to have their own personalities. Daniel liked this. He noticed that the letterboxes curled up and smiled at him as he walked through the village. He even saw the windows wink at him. Some houses said hello and some played beautiful music through their chimneys. Daniel wondered what the monsters must look like if these were the houses they lived in. Central to the village was a grassland where Daniel could see a circular seating area and a roaring campfire. Around the seating was an array of colours, textures and sizes. These were Dex's monster friends. They had to be. Daniel's hands began to tremble and his stomach felt fluttery. But he told himself this was normal when you meet someone new. He had experienced feelings like this before. He thought back to the day when he met Ryan, his best friend, on the first day at school. He felt so nervous, his belly was filled with butterflies and his hands were sweaty. That wasn't too bad after all. So he took a deep breath, smiled and walked towards the campfire. Hey everyone, this is Daniel. I found him sleeping in his bedroom. Actually, he was making some strange noises, said Dex, scratching his head in thought. Heads turned, some all the way round. And every single eye was looking at Daniel. And there were lots of eyes. Daniel had never seen so many. Some of Dex's friends had more than two eyes. Some he wouldn't even like to count. He could feel every eye analysing him. Daniel hoped they weren't eyeing him up for lunch. Hi everyone, Daniel said apprehensively. There were groans, grunts, rumbles, mumbles, hays and hellos from all around. Some of the monsters were waving, some were laughing. Some were lowering their heads and continuing with their conversations. Daniel could hear whispers about Shelley coming tonight. He thought back to when Dex had mentioned that he needed to be back for Shelley. He wondered who Shelley was and why tonight was so important. Dex, Daniel asked, who is Shelley? Shelley is one of, is one of our monster friends here in Monster Mountain. Sadly, she hasn't made it to a meeting yet. She gets worried and it upsets her. She really struggles to talk in front of all of us, but we've been trying for a while to help her and to get her here tonight. We want to help her and hopefully we have, Dex explained. I understand what that feeling is like, Daniel replied. But what is tonight? Why is it she will be coming? But the sight of a monster bouncing up and down, talking fast and waving at him furiously interrupted Daniel's questions. He smiled shyly and waved back. That's Oxo, Octo. Dex told him. He is always this excited. He sure is. Sometimes he can't sit still. We just embrace him. He talks a lot too, Dex said, and Daniel loved the way he spoke about him with such acceptance. Daniel could hear giggling as he watched two young, younger monsters chasing each other and laughing. This reminded him of, him of when him and Darcy played hide and seek. They had fun together. Darcy would love it here. A monster near the campfire was busy tidying away leaves that had blown aimlessly near the campfire. She was picking each one up and straightening the benches around the fire and muttering to herself. Daniel couldn't quite hear what she was saying as she picked up leaf after leaf. Who is that? Daniel asked Dex. That's Bessie. She likes things tidy and just so, Dex lowered his voice. In the far right corner, Daniel could hear a large foghorn noise coming from a monster blowing her nose. He looked and spotted a tear rolling down her face. 
and she gently wiped it away with one of her many tentacles. The noise was so loud it made some of the monsters chuckle. He heard one of them make a comment about smelling wind, but Daniel knew the noise was nose blowing and not wind. Darcy was a windbreaker. This made Daniel smile as he thought about his sister. That shadow, Dex pointed to the monster who was sobbing. Daniel and Dex were disturbed by a loud noise. Daniel couldn't ask Dex why Shadow was crying, but he would try to find out when he could. He liked to help people, especially if they were upset. Bang, bang, bang. Daniel jumped at the loud noise coming from the left side of the campfire. A round monster who was a fiery red colour and had misshapen blobs around his body was whacking a wooden plank against the floor. From a distance, Daniel was convinced there was steam coming out of his ears, but he couldn't be certain. It reminded him of when Darcy got angry with her dolls for not drank, drinking all the pretend tea she had made them. The monster shouted, why me? Why is it always me? What is wrong with this place? Why can't it just fit into the space I spend all day creating for it? Stupid plank of wood. Well, that will teach you. The plank broke in two and the monster seemed satisfied, but his face was redder than before and he seemed to be sweating. That wallop, whispered Dex. Daniel thought it best not to introduce himself to the wallop just yet, rather opting to give him some time to calm down. He knew that having some time to calm down always worked when he felt angry. Although he couldn't even ever remember breaking things. Going to have to do some planking later, shouted a monster called Charm to Dex. We plank in PE, Daniel said, feeling proud about making links between his world and the monster world. And we plank in yoga too, don't we? It's not an exercise, silly. It means planks to replace the one wallop just broke, Dex said with a smile. Take a seat. It's about to begin. Now, would you like to see the wonderful campfire where the monsters are all sitting around? Wow. How wonderful. So, get ready for our next instalment of Daniel's Dreams, Monster Mountain. Will Daniel keep his cool? Bye for now. <laughs>